Leap Motion is similar to the Kinect. It's a 3D motion capture device, but it's vertically oriented, so it sets it on your computer and faces up. Um, USB connection to your PC or your Mac, it's about the size of a pack of gum. It's about three inches long. It's only uh, $79.99 retail. It uses two infrared cameras and three infrared LEDs to capture your movement in space. So it, it captures roughly, um, if you were to put your arms out and make a circle, about that much space on your desktop is captured by the Leap Motion. You can move your hands in that and interact with it. So again, there's a uh, magazine article there you can check out with some source code um, for the Delphi wrappers. It uses the JSON interface to return a set of series of frames that you can then grab data from. So here's a demo of the Leap Motion in action. So let's take a look at the Leap Motion in action. Here's the box that comes in. Not a very big box because it's not a very big device. It's about the size of a stick of gum. Now, it's a USB cable. It's actually USB 3. Plugs into your computer. And then uh, you want to make sure the green light's facing you. That's how it's oriented correctly. On the top, now you're seeing three white lights and they're actually red when I'm looking at them because they're infrared and uh, the camera doesn't differentiate between red, infrared and, and light so it just sees as bright white light sources. But there's three infrared LEDs and then there's two monochromatic cameras, infrared cameras. And so it projects the infrared light up and then sees how it reflects off of things in order to determine if it is all, or in order to determine orientation. So plug this into your computer. Um, on the Leap Motion site, actually when you get the, when you install it, it tells you how to install the drivers. That's all you need. You don't need to go to the uh, uh, developer section and download the SDK. Uh, you can go take a look at it if you want to, but the, we don't need the SDK for connecting to it. So it turns out in order to be enabled for a JavaScript in API, it has a web server running on this device. So this device actually has a web server on it. It's actually called a WebSocket server. So any URL I visit here is gonna come back with a blank page because it's a WebSocket server. It's not, it's not specifically an HTTP server. So what does that mean? So a WebSocket server is built on top of an HTTP server. So if I do a request, it's gonna come back and say, okay, 200 okay, but there's no document returned. And the server, it says the WebSocket++. Plus plus. This is an open source WebSocket server. So WebSockets are built on top of HTTP. And so you go through this handshake by saying upgrade WebSocket connection upgrade. And then this is a, uh, this key is a random number, but I can use the same key over and over and over again for uh, demo purposes here. And then origin. So by passing this additional information in here, it says, hey, I'm making a WebSocket request. And so WebSocket request works the same as an HTTP request, except it's gonna just stream JSON back to me. So put this in here and boom, we see all this JSON being streamed back to me. Now, if we look at this, we see um, a frame rate, uh, gestures, hands, interaction box. So the it's streaming back information to us and this information is coming back to us is actually each JSON record here is called a frame. And so a frame contains information in it. Now, uh, if I was had my hand over here manipulating it, we would see fingers and hands. This would change, we'd have values in there, but um, we don't right now because it's just uh, had no input coming in. But if we were to parse out this JSON information, we could then read the sensor data, okay? So here's the current frame rate, it's coming 21, frames per second of sensor data are coming back from this sensor right now through the WebSocket. So how do we do this? We could parse that JSON out ourselves, but luckily someone's already done that for us. So Michael Van Kant has put together some uh, libraries here for talking to um, the Leap Motion through JSON. He builds on top of a few other open source libraries, uh, Super Object, um, uh, Synapse and uh, another WebSocket server. And all of these work together in order to let you talk to the Leap Motion. So we're going to run this demo here. Uh, made a couple slight changes to it just to make it a little more colorful, really. So I go ahead and hit start. So we see here's the frame information we just saw in JSON flying past. And I have put my hand over here. We see those dots show up. So there's my four fingers and my thumb 
are showing up. And up at the top here, we see it says pointables five, fingers five, hands one. I put my other hand out here. It says, oh, hey, you got two hands out there now. And if I put my hand just right, there we go. Ten fingers. So it's saying it will see all my fingers and differentiate them. Um, as I move my hands, I'll just put one up here. But I move my hand f directly over the sensor, it's very large fingers. If I move them away from the sensor this way, it gets smaller. And if I move them over the sensor the direction, they get smaller again. So it's seeing a three-dimensional space around here. And it can determine where I'm at in this space, whether I'm directly over the sensor, behind the sensor, up high, down low, etc. To the left, to the right, all of this information is returned back from the uh, system. Now, because this is uh, infrared and it has a projector coming off of it, it actually works better in, in a little bit lower light. That's why the light's a little low here, and it might be a little hard to see exactly what's going on, but hopefully enough that you can get the gen general idea of my hands there and it's picking up my hand so there's an additional functionality beyond just showing where my fingers are you can actually turn on gestures where it can see things like uh, uh, gestures whether it be left and right up and down moving your finger in a circle clicking with your finger something like that all of these things are gestures that you can enable and then you get events back specifically about those gestures that those gestures are taking place and uh, so that makes it more interactive as far as a input device.